Take a look at this mural inside Duraga Church in Legazpi. There's something in this painting that may look familiar. The mural depicts Kagsawa Church and the residents of Kagsawa fleeing from one of the most violent eruptions of the Mayan volcano in recorded history. But why is this mural inside Duraga Church? Is it simply there for historical reference? Or is there a much deeper connection behind the ruins of Kagsawa and the church and the people of Duraga? This is a story of tragedy and sadness, but also a story of hope and how the Filipino spirit is stronger than the destructive power of Mother Nature. Join us today as we discover the tragic yet fascinating connection between Duraga Church and the Kagsawa ruins. And stay tuned until the end of this video for a possible explanation to some modern day controversy surrounding the ruins of Kagsawa Church. Today we're going somewhere very special. This is Daraga Church. Daraga? Daraga Church. Tara Daraga Church. Yeah. This is Tony's brother. His yeah. name is also Mark. Say hi to the blog. Hi. <laughs> uh, Daraga Church, over 250 years yes. old. This it's place old. is impressive. Yes. They're this, old. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check it out, guys. Yeah. This is pretty spectacular. The Mayan volcano has erupted a few times in the history of Legazpi here. And as you can see by the mural here, when it does erupt, it creates such mass chaos and destruction for the people of uh, Legazpi. So this mural behind us here sort of depicts that uh, event. We went to uh, uh, another place, it was called uh, Kasaga Ruins, I believe. Kas I can't remember. We went to, two years ago, we went to this other church that was actually destroyed by the volcano. And we're probably gonna go back there this time too, so I can do some more vlogging there. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, incredibly powerful mother nature here and the destruction it can uh, wreak and havoc on people. Yes. What do we have? Uh, this one. It's only 50. 50 pesos? 50 pesos. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's late. But it's too uh, small. It's what? It's too it's small. small. It's too small. I know. I got big wrists, right? Uh, this one. Like, I could get like one. These. I should get one for Tony. What? I should yep. get one for Tony. Yeah. I should get one. Uh, hmm. Here, you hold that for a second. My soon to be wife. My sister. His sister, yeah. Well, my soon to be wife, his sister. Pag, uh, do you know the ano, uh, pagsalingoy means uh, tulok bak? What's that? Uh, tulok bak. What's that? Uh, uh, pagsalingoy. Pagsalingoy. Yeah. Oh, was that another church? Uh, uh, before uh, the church, uh, the mother parish was yeah. uh, in Kagsawa. Kags oh, Kagsawa Kags ruins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. We were uh, just talking but, about uh, that. The Mayan volcano yeah. erupted, so yes. now people uh, decided to move their uh, patron here in the Church. Now, just to put a little context on this moment, I was at this point unaware of the connection between Kagsawa ruins and Daraga Church, and this young man was about to explain to me the connection between the two. Before, it was Kagsawa ruins. Yeah, is the the, the mother parish. Yes, I remember uh, we were there once. Yeah, uh, then. It was devastated by the eruption of Mayon volcano. Yeah. So that the people uh, on Kagsawa, they decided to move their uh, patron saint here. So this church is connected to Kagsawa ruins. Yeah. Really? I had no idea. And you know, it's funny. Uh, I was just the, talking. Uh, in uh, Google. Yeah. You can search it. You really? Can search the Google. Ah, it is you, super cool. Yeah. Super cool. I had no idea. And I was just talking about the, the mural over there. Ah, do you see the portrait here? Yeah, there? yeah, yeah. 
Kensalato here. Yeah, that is cool. And I had no idea that there was a connection between the two. Yeah, awesome. Beautiful history about uh, both churches now. Isn't that, isn't that impressive? About the, the volcano? Like, look how tall it is. It's like 8,000 meters or 8,000 feet. Oh, you know what that's at? Yeah, 8,000 feet. It is the top five uh, tallest higher. volcanoes in, in the Philippines. Yeah. yeah. It is an impressive, impressive sight. Beautiful warm day here in the Philippines as we visit Daraga Church. The day's just getting started. We've got more to do. We've got more places to go, more places to check out. Thanks to my videographer and my backpack guru, brother of mine. Yeah. <laughs> we will see you in a bit. After discovering this unique connection between the Kagsawa Ruins and Daraga Church, I was reminded of what Tony said to me when we visited Kagsawa Ruins two years ago. It's a very tragic event because all people went inside the Mayon volcano. Um, it went inside to the went inside on the uh, inside the church to feel safe because of the eruption, but apparently the ashes covered them and really? all dead. Yeah, that's Just why the Mayon was called a beautiful disaster. With this newfound knowledge of the history between the two churches, I wanted to revisit this historic site with a new perspective of what this place is and how important it is to the people of the Bicol region. Today, the historic site of the Kagsawa Church Ruins is a tourist attraction. Now, while it may seem odd to see families out having fun and beautiful gardens and attractions at the site of such a human tragedy, it speaks to the mindset of the Filipino people. Despite tragedy, despite death and destruction, the Filipino spirit picks up the pieces and makes something beautiful out of it. Beauty, peace, happiness, and joy. A reminder that life is precious and that every moment should be celebrated, no matter what. On February 1st, 1814, tragedy struck. The Mayan volcano had its most violent eruption in recorded history. Thousands were killed in the town of Kagsawa, and hundreds more lost their lives when they sought shelter within the walls of Kagsawa Church but they were overcome from the pyroclastic clouds of ash that swept down from the Mayan volcano. Those that survived realized they needed to move further away from the volcano and relocated to what is now today in Gatsby City. As devastating as this was to the people of Kagsawa, they rebuilt. They rebuilt their homes, they rebuilt their lives, and they rebuilt their families. And they rebuilt their church. What is today, Daraga Church. So how happy are you that we are here again after two years? I'm so happy! Yes. It's too bad I can't see the volcano, but believe me, there's going to be lots of opportunities for us to see the volcano before we leave. So stay tuned for more adventures to come. There is one more mystery about Kagsawa ruins that needs to be told. The story, as passed on to most of us, is that the church was buried in a landslide of molten lava and ash leaving only the very top of the steeple visible to us, and burying the rest, leaving only what we see today. But recently, this story has come into question. In June of 2014, Abdon Balde Jr., I hope I pronounced his name right, he's a cultural consultant to the Albe government, presented recently discovered photos taken in 1934, which show the original facade of the church still intact, and show that the height of the original church steeple was the same height as what we see today. So, what does this all mean? There's no question about the devastation and loss of life when Mount Mayon erupted in 1814. And unquestionably, there was devastation and destruction in and around the Kagsawa area and the church. Evidence of this still remains there today with massive boulders the size of small cars littering the historic site, hurled a full 10 kilometers from the mouth of the Mayon volcano. The church was undoubtedly destroyed, leaving very little of the original structure intact and with the death of so many residents inside from suffocating clouds of volcanic ash and debris, it's no wonder the survivors decided to abandon this location and relocate to the Legazby region and rebuild their church there in what is now called Daraga Church. With nothing left to support it, the final facade we see in these 1934 photographs is said to have collapsed in an earthquake in 1950, leaving what we see today, the last remaining structure of the church, the bell tower. For me personally, this story is an inspiration. It reminds me of what it means to face adversity and how unimportant some of the little things I sometimes worry about really are. It's the story of inspiration and hope 
and it should be celebrated as a story of hope and survival. Me and Tony hope you've enjoyed this unique look at Kaisawa Ruins and Daraga Church. As always, God bless you all, and consider giving our little channel a boost by clicking that like button. Also, let me know in the comments below what you think of this alternate history to the Kagsawa ruins. I have left links to all the articles I used in my research to this story below, and to the YouTube video that 9TV News first presented in 2014. Hit that notification bell as I have many more videos of our last trip together in the Philippines in April 2022, including more footage of the most special event of our lives, our wedding.